project here. Uh, this consists of an exercise bicycle and a car alternator. This car alternator came out of a 1998 Plymouth Breeze and uh, I'm using this to generate uh, DC voltage to charge uh, a bank of batteries. And I have a current meter here to show, uh, I'll give you a little demonstration of how that works. So what I have here is a uh, my bank of batteries that the alternator charges. Inside here, it's kind of dark here in the corner, but I have uh, 12 12 volt 7 amp hour AGM batteries, all tied in parallel, uh, all fused, and uh, what this does is it connects to an inverter. This is a 600 watt inverter. Uh, it takes the incoming DC and outputs 120 volts AC here. And what this is connected to is a transfer switch. Uh, the tr a transfer switch is a device that allows you to power your household loads when you lose power. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a generator input here and uh, there's also a secondary input this is a UPS input and this allows you to distribute uninterruptible power throughout your house and this switch is made by APC up here and it's a pretty neat little device uh, you can monitor your um, utility uh, current and wattage that you're using and it also registers the kilowatt hours so what I'm doing is I'm distributing my power through one of the circuits in this house and that circuit is right here circuit 6 now you got to be very careful <clears throat> that the circuit you apply with this little setup here uh, does not overload your inverter. Uh, this is only a 600 watt inverter. So I want to make sure that the loads that I apply to it uh, don't overload it. Uh, this particular circuit is mostly running a uh, single CFL. Uh, there's dining room lights on it, an outdoor light. Uh, there is a computer but it's really used. Uh, it's backing up an alarm clock. Um, but that's about it. Not much on it. So I'm, I'm pretty much safe uh, not overloading this, this uh, inverter. Now right now it's running on utility but I'm going to transfer this to my uh, my battery and inverter setup. So to do that I'm going to set it to uninterruptible. And you can see when it transfers, you can see a load. Oh, there goes my inverter. My battery's in a low state of charge. But it is powering this lamp up upstairs. So, what I have here is I have a current meter on my little uh, alternator setup here. Um, how this works is there, an alternator needs an energizer circuit. And that's what this switch is here for. This switch right here. Now when I turn that on, the alternator begins using current. And I'm using, you see it negative minus 0.8. That's really draining the battery down right now. So what I do is I get myself spinning. There's not much resistance here. I need to pedal as fast as I can, but since there's no resistance, it's not really taxing me too much. So once I get spinning, I can now turn my switch on. And 
you can see I'm generating plus half 1.5 amps or so. And it depends on how fast I'm pedaling. So I can really pedal this thing, get about four or five amps out of it. That's not too much trouble. So I can go about 20 minutes here, no problem. Once I'm done, I put energy back into the batteries. And the load that I'm powering is very small, probably around 20 amps or so. It's uh, powering the CFL, compact fluorescent. That 20 watts will run for about seven hours or so. Or you can pedal longer and get more run time out of your batteries. Now you've probably seen a, a few of these demos on uh, YouTube. A lot of people have uh, done this type of project before. Uh, but they've never done anything practical with it. Uh, in my case, I'm charging a bank of batteries that'll run a small load but it's you know it's you know it's it's a load nevertheless and uh, it's an excuse to exercise actually and if you did this every day you'd be uh, in good shape and you might as well do something with your energy make electricity although an alternator is not the most efficient way of doing it it's a very cheap way of doing it I want to go in detail of how this uh, is wired. You can see this is my cable for the batteries. Uh, black is minus, red is positive. And that is going to my current meter here and then back out to my alternator output. This alternator output has a wire that extends up to a resistor. And this is a 20 watt power resistor. It's 8 ohms. Uh, and you need this to energize your alternator. An alternator does not have any permanent magnets. So you need to energize the coils to, energy, to generate a field. So when you start spinning uh, you start pedaling and you start spinning the alternator, you're making current. That extends up to a switch, goes right back down to your energizer circuit. The energizer circuit is this port here, and it has a plus and minus as well. The minus side is attached to the, uh, the case of the alternator. And here's your negative going back out to your, to your battery. Uh, this is very simple, very simple to uh, make, very simple to operate, and it's an excuse to exercise and burn your calories.